beautiful woman, his brother Al. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming. And it will be an injustice that I might ask some certain questions that will be just for the sake of the nation and the protection of the nation. It's easy to say you're a husband and wife and you can just pack it up and walk away. But the nation has been attacked in such a way throughout the generations, starting from our slavery or what have you, that it's important that we restore what we've lost. And so in doing so, I'm going to ask some questions that in reality may cause some of you guys to say, what? Excuse me, why? And it's because we've allowed ourselves to be captive by other nations that don't necessarily live up to the culture of our history. We believe as a majority that the people before us, whether practicing or not, that the majority are Israelites by blood. And because of the Captivity that we've been under, we've been robbed of that reality. And being robbed of that reality, uh, it's important that we bring it back. No matter when we start, as long as we start. And this is a good opportunity for us to come together as I represent the tribe of Ephraim or the northern kingdom of our nation. It's an honor and a privilege to come before us and, and, and represent our come together and touch and agree with those that consider themselves of the Southern people. We are one nation that throughout history we were split up through foolishness. And those captivities that we've been under was really because of our foolishness. And so it's my responsibility to come and hold this couple accountable to ensure that the mistakes we've made we don't make again. I'm gonna ask the question, well, I'm going to touch on some topics that, again, may start with some of you guys. I don't know if you know about our history, but we started our history as a polygamous people, as a polygamous family. It was one man and four wives that created the nation of Israel. And so that's where we all stem from. The beautiful thing about choice is that in the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1, it says that it's a beautiful thing when a man and a woman can come together and agree. That being the case it doesn't necessarily mean that they're uh, embracing the life of plural marriage or religion as we may know it, even though that's our history. They have a choice to choose a monogamous uh, path if they choose to do so, okay. for this reason or for that reason. One of the things that I don't allow as an elder in the life of many men is I don't allow a man to allow said decisions to be because the woman said so. That doesn't work in our culture. Unlike how we were raised, our culture is very specific about who's the head of the house. And so it's my job to ensure that as I touch and agree with this brother to fulfill his responsibility, that I make sure that he's the man that the culture insists we are to be, not who we were told we are. Understood? Understood. One of the significant things that I like about what's occurring right now is that there's a young lady in our culture who went by the name of Tamar. And there was a significant story about that um, story that really gave me a great understanding about moments like this. In her past, she hid her identity. And by hiding her identity, when she was looked upon by Judah, one of our tribal leaders, he perceived her to be a harlot because she covered her identity. What does that mean nowadays? That means if Brother I were to take this beautiful daughter of Zion and have intimate relationship with her behind closed doors and nobody knew about it, he would be guilty of treating her like a harlot. So being that he has taken this bold statement of bringing all of you into his uh, circle of influence, allowing you all to come and partake in such a historical moment in his life, I mean, it's, it's memorable. Okay. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. And when the Bible says that I'm not gonna be a statue two and three witnesses, we have plenty of witnesses that go beyond him. 
Now, it's very important you understand that according to Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, when you make a vow, you are to fulfill that vow. So I'm going to ask you a question pertaining monogamy and polygyny. And all you have to do is say yes or no. Are you deliberately embracing this relationship as a monogamous relationship? Yes. Yes, he is. Awesome. It, it is interesting because many would be surprised at such a statement considering our culture and history. But when a person like yourself can take the initiative to stand your ground, to give it wholeheartedly to one woman in this part in this time of your life, with such liberties that we are given in our culture, it says a lot about your maturity. That being said, let me say this. When you make such a vow as Numbers chapter 30 verse 2 shows a man to make before the Most High, you have to realize that breaking that vow, the penalty of such can be death. Not only that, the Most High has gifted you as a leader among a remnant of his people. And there are a lot of people that are looking up to you besides the beautiful woman that he's uniting with. Amen. Understand? Thus, there's a lot of blood that you carry, whether you understood that or not. And so if I get a phone call as an elder in your life of uh, such foolery without um, a proper consensual agreement or even of a negative influence in that you force it to do such after making such a vow, it's very dangerous. And as an elder in your life, I can only do the righteous thing, and if that be the case, then so be it. That's how severe, how, how serious this decision that we just made is. You understand that? Yes. To be honest with you, that's to be applauded. If you can applaud, I'll keep it. I'm going to go down a few more questions, then I'm going to jump to this beautiful daughter of Zion, Sister Stella. And once we do that, we'll proceed and we'll conclude. Just be patient as we've been standing up here for a few minutes. Um, I want you all to be patient, but this is very important because this is not only for them, it's for all of us and that there are so many of us that have been deceived through the captivity of the religion that have been forced upon them. Okay? Do you plan to cover Sister Estella as stipulated in the book of the law by ensuring she has raiment, food, covering, and her duty of marriage as stipulated in Exodus 21.10? Yes or no? Yes. Are you aware according to Sirach 25.22 that if a woman maintain her husband is full of anger, Impudence, lack of respect, and much reproach, meaning that she'll be expressing disappointment. Do you understand that? Yes. Are you aware that First Corinthians thirteen four says that love is patient and love is kind? Do you understand that? Yes. Are you further aware that First Corinthians thirteen eight stipulates that love never fails? That means that if she ever push you to a corner where you want to put her through the wall because humanity is what it is, it means that you're failing to be an appropriate, you're failing to love appropriately with being patient and kind. Do you know that patient and kindness is measured when it's undeserved? And so we have a tendency of allowing women in our lives daughters, wives, this, that, or what have you, get the best of them and sometimes push buttons that shouldn't be pushed. And when I mentor men or I counsel individuals, I'm always going to hold them accountable, not to the money they make or what have you, but I'm going to hold them accountable to the patience and the kindness that was deserving when it wasn't deserving. You understand? That to me is a man. According to 
to Romans 2.4, the most high will use kindness to cause people to repent. And so I like to couple 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 8, which says love never fails, which is based on kindness, with Romans 2, 4, because he'll use that level of kindness to cause people to repent. So if you call me one day stressed out because she's pushing all the wrong buttons, I'm going to challenge your patience and kindness before her. Because if you understand the scriptures as mentioned here, your patience and your kindness automatically will cause you to repent as a blessed of the most high, being patient and kind. Is that understood? Yeah. And you're willing to take on that task. Yeah. That's what that's what we're here for. Sister Stella, looking all beautiful. Yeah. You excited about the things he said? Yeah. We are too. 